It is that time of year again, the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival here in Sydney, Australia. What do you need to know? Well, watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going? You're watching Iron Will, your place to find tips, tricks, and experience in triathlon, multi sport, and endurance events and training. So it is September here in Sydney, Australia, and the rest of the world, I'm guessing. And that means that it is time for the Sydney Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival here in Sydney, Australia. This year I am doing the Sydney Full Marathon in an attempt to reset my Guinness World Record title that I set back in 2017, but was broken earlier this year. So the Guinness World Record title for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform. And I'm doing it this year to raise funds and awareness for the Run Beyond project, but more about that later in the video. The Blackmore Sydney Running Festival has four different events that run throughout it. The 3.5 kilometre uh, family fun run, the 10 kilometre bridge run, the half marathon and the full marathon. And this is a great mixture of events for all sorts of people. And all of the events involve running across the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge, which I've got to say is an amazing experience. They close down the entire bridge. There's no traffic, there's no cars, there's no buses. It's just all the runners running across this gigantic structure that was created nearly a hundred years ago. And just as a bit of a push to sign up, entries are filling up fast, especially for the half marathon and the full marathon. I saw in an email this morning that those two events are nearly 95% capacity. So to enter and get all the information you need that's maybe not contained within this video, I'll leave a link in the description box below. So where do each of the courses go from this Blackmore Sydney Running Festival? All of the events start at Milsons Point, which is on the north side of the Sydney Harbour Bridge next to Luna Park. So the 3.5 kilometre family fun run starts at 9 a.m. So it takes you across the Sydney Harbour Bridge and then finishes in front of the Conservatorium of Music, which is next to the Botanical Gardens, which is next to the Sydney Opera House. So this one doesn't finish at the Sydney Opera House, but it does finish next to the Botanical Gardens. And going across the Sydney Harbour Bridge itself is amazing. So if you are with a family or if you aren't particularly fast or if you just want to challenge yourself to a 3.5 kilometer fast run, then this can be a great event for you. The 10 kilometer bridge run takes this a step further. Well, actually quite a few steps further three times the distance, almost. So it's a certified 10 kilometer course. Uh, the 10 kilometer bridge run, again, takes you across the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge and then does a little loop, goes down the domain. So it goes down to Mrs. Macquarie's chair, which is a spectacular view of Sydney in itself, and then loops back across, finishing in front of the Opera House. If you want to do a 10 kilometer run, and also if you want to see a couple of the most amazing places in Sydney, this is a spectacular course for you. And now skipping back to 6am on the day, which is very early, is the Half Marathon. So the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival Half Marathon. This is the event that I did last year, which was amazing. And this event takes a slightly different route. It does start at the exact same place, so it starts on the north side of the Harbour Bridge, you run across the Harbour Bridge, but you don't go through the domain, you don't go through down to Mrs Macquarie's chair. Instead, you take a loop back at Hyde Park, go around to Piermont, and then you run around sort of Piermont, and then follow the water along Darling Harbour, Brangaroo, Circular Quay, and finish in front of the Sydney Opera House. Now I may be a bit biased, but I think this is one of the best half marathons in the world. It takes you around some of the best places in Sydney and also takes you across the Sydney Harbour Bridge while the sun is rising. It is amazing. Then there's the big one, the Sydney Full Marathon. This is the one that I did back in 2017 and it was amazing. Painful, but amazing. This one takes, again, a slightly different route. So it follows along with a Sydney Half Marathon to begin with going across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, then going through Hyde Park, but where the half marathoners turn around, the Sydney full marathoners keep going. They go around to Centennial Park, and then you do sort of a one and a half loop of Centennial Park before coming back through Sydney City, making your way back down to Piermont, 
and then taking a slightly longer route through Piemont. So you go all the way along the waterfront, along every pier, back and down, back and forth. This then goes all the way along through Darling Harbour, uh, Barangaroo, Circular Quay, and finishing in front of the Sydney Opera House. Now the part that goes through Centennial Park, especially for me since I'll be running this in the Kung Fu uniform, including Kung Fu slippers, running through Centennial Park involves running through a certain section which is gravel. And that involves a lot of little stones, which you definitely feel those if you're running in extremely minimalist shoes. Although I must say in 2017 when I was running it, I ran past someone who was running it barefoot. So while I at least had some protection, they had absolutely nothing. So kudos to them. And also the second major challenge that I feel during that race, once you get to that 21 kilometer mark, in this case, it's once you've done the loops of Centennial Park and you're coming back through to Sydney, that's when you realize I'm only halfway. The people who are doing the half marathon, they're finished. They're done by now. I've still got another half marathon to go. That is probably the most mentally tough section of a marathon uh, that I know of. It is so hard to push through, but it is so rewarding to push through. The Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, especially the marathon and the half marathon from my experience, are amazing events. They're not too hilly. There are a little bit of ups and downs here and there, but for the most part, they're relatively flat, which makes them quite fast courses. And so, especially if you're going to set a Guinness World Record title, these are great events to attend. And that brings me to my next point, which is the Guinness World Record titles and also the charity aspect. So every year the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival arranges for a Guinness World Records representative to attend the event to certify, like immediately certify world record attempts for the marathon and I believe the half marathon as well. This brings the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival in alignment with other major marathons around the world, especially say the London Marathon, which also hosts a Guinness World Records representative. And they have usually, I think it's around 10 or maybe 15, 20 different people attempting Guinness World Record titles each year. And so quite a few people set Guinness World Record titles at these events. If you ever want to set a Guinness World Record title, then if you're in Australia, the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival is your event. So to take a part of this, you will need to make sure that you are registered for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival in the, di the distance category that you would prefer. And also try and pick the entry group that you would prefer as well. So if you're trying to set a 3.30 marathon, you need to be in the A entry group. That's the one that I've signed up for. If you're setting maybe a four hour marathon record, then you can go into say the B category. Make sure you choose your entry group correctly uh, and make sure you sign up as early as possible so you can get your entry group. Now secondly, you also need to make sure that you sign up at the Guinness World Records website. Here you'll then select the marathon title that you want to attempt. You'll put in your details, you'll put in the time that you expect to finish the marathon in, and you'll then also upload pictures of the costume or whatever it is that you're wearing for the marathon attempt that day. And then you'll get a pending approval. Once you get a pending approval, that means you're all good to go on the day. And then the local uh, organizer will contact you and make sure that all is okay and all you need to do is turn up on the day of the marathon and set that Guinness World Record title. On the day of the event itself when you turn up you will be greeted by the Guinness World Records representative at the start line so you'll have a hello shake hands they'll double check that the costume you're wearing is the one that was required the one that you uploaded photos of on the website so if it's all okay then they say go ahead good luck we hope to see you at the finish line in the time that you've specified and you're good to go also another thing that quite often happens at these is so the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival wants to promote the Guinness World Records part of it uh, that's one of the one of the draw cards of the event so you may get a couple of cameras in your face you may also talk to radio there's a whole bunch of things and promotion that may happen 
And this is one of the great ways that, especially if you're running for charity, you can help promote the charity. So that brings me to my next point, which is the Blackmore City Running Festival allows people to run and raise money and funds and awareness for charity. So whatever event you're doing, when you sign up for it, you're also allowed to sign up for a fundraising page. This is through Grassroots. Once you set up your fundraising page, then it's up to you to spread this fundraising page as much as you can and see how many funds you can raise. Now, if you're doing the marathon, if you raise over, I believe it's $500, you can also get your entry paid for for free. And if you haven't yet signed up for a charity, I would thoroughly recommend the Run Beyond Project. So that's the charity I'm running on behalf of. It's a local charity here in Sydney, Australia, helping young people, students in need, the sort of people, like people who may not get the sorts of privileges that a lot of us take for granted. And it helps provide them with running gear, so running shoes, singlets, that sort of stuff, and also entries into events. Like it uses running as a medium to help teach essential life skills, such as resilience, commitment, overcoming obstacles, all these sorts of things that you need if you're going to be running a Guinness World Record title. Also, I did a photo shoot a couple of weeks ago and they posted my video today onto Facebook as part of the official Blackmore Sydney Running Festival one week to go, a promotional material. So I'll leave a little link to that in the description box below. And if you have a spare couple of dollars, I would very much appreciate if you could send a few of those dollars through to my donation page. So it's the Run Beyond Project. My donation page is donate to will Dot com. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. All right, now that we've covered all of that, back to the run. So with your entry, you'll need to pick up your bib at the Race Expo, which takes place the weekend of the run. I believe it starts on the Thursday, goes until the Saturday, and you go in there. I believe it's sponsored by ASICS. You go in there, you uh, go through a few stalls, so you can pick up your last minute goodies, uh, gels, race packs, race uh, belts, all that sort of thing. Those I thoroughly recommend. And any other gear that you may need for the day as a last minute sort of thing. And then go and pick up your bib. So you need to make sure that you have your entry with you. Make sure you have your race number because that's what you present to the people at the desk. And they look at your race number and go find it and go give it back to you. So if you don't know your race number, you may be there scratching your head for a bit trying to find it. Make sure you have that before you get to the event. And this run expo takes place at the Sydney Town Hall. So right in the middle of Sydney City itself. <clears throat> Your best bet is to get off at Town Hall train station or catch a bus to the area. Or you can catch a tram if you're in the area where I am, out near sort of the Dulwich Hill Way. Anywhere along there you can catch a tram up to the best bet is Capitol Theatre and walk up to Town Hall. So what can you expect on the day of the race? Well, the first thing is that your bib includes all of the public transport fares in it. So if you have your bib, you will be able to catch your train, tram, bus, even ferry, whatever it is, into the event for free. Just make sure that you present your bib and they'll let you on. The next thing is to make sure that you get there with a little bit of time to spare. I'd say maybe try and get there with at least half an hour before your race actually starts. So that's to get there for at least half an hour before your race actually starts. There are a lot of people doing this event. Uh, I know, especially last year when I was doing the half marathon, once you get off the train, it becomes a slow amble from the train station to the starting line. So if you turn up with five minutes until the event, you may find yourself stressing a bit, which may then put you out. So get up a little early, go to the bathroom, and get there early enough that you can relax, stretch, have a warm up before your start time starts. At the finish line, I know at least for the half marathon and the full marathon, you do get an awesome medal which is an awesome piece of memorabilia of the event. And also in the full marathon, you do actually get a finisher's shirt, 
make sure that you get the right size for you. I do believe they size a little on the small side. I got a small in 2017 and it was way too tight. So be careful. And then after the event, there is the post event finishes area. So if you have pre-purchased food or maybe there's a marquee that you've paid for entry to or you're included in entry to, this is the place where you'll be able to go rest, relax, get some food, maybe get a massage. And of course, the biggest thing for this event is to make sure that you have fun. Listen to your body throughout the event. Uh, make sure that you take in enough nutrition. There are loads of nutrition stalls across the run, especially for the full marathon and the half marathon. There are places where you can grab the gels, there's electrolytes, there's water. Take advantage of that at every opportunity. Make sure that you reach that finish line and you are proud of what you have achieved. As I've said before, it doesn't really matter if you don't achieve the original goal that you set out to achieve. What matters is that you push yourself to as far as you possibly can on the day of the race, given the conditions that you are dealt with on that day. So have fun. If you see me out there in my Kung Fu uniform, give me a wave, give me a high five, and hopefully I'll be running faster than you and I may even see you at the finish line. To check out my video about the charity that I'm running on behalf of, the Run Beyond Project, I'll leave a link up here. If you want to check out my half marathon video that I did last year, which was my second video on this channel, I'll leave a link up here. If you want swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.